supplements. So, and then obviously there's a bunch of other nutritional factors which are not just antioxidants, something called beta-glucan. It's a factor that is able to upregulate your immune system. Uh, things like oregano oil, which you heard about, which is powerful antiviral, antibacterial, and etheric oil, good for your gut, kills yeast in your gut, yeah, which is then healthy also, supports your probiotics. Oregano oil, olive leaf extract, an old antiviral olive leaf extract in higher doses, wonderful antibacterial, antiviral, to some extent antiparasitic, also an antioxidant. Yeah, many of the herbs have all kinds of functions, not just one. Colostrum. Yeah, was mentioned before, which is one of the healthy factors which stimulate our gut immune system. We meanwhile, sometimes call it transfer factors, um, which is similar things. These are substances coming out of mother's milk, cow's mother's milk, colostrum, which are immune stimulative. That's how the baby, the human baby, gets its immune system initially. Yeah? The baby's gut is sterile when it's born, and with the mother's milk it gets all these wonderful immune stimulative substances then that um, populate its gut. Okay, that's why a baby's got this wonderful gut. If you smell a baby, you know, you directly notice how healthy it is because it exudes acidophilus and other friendly bacteria. Yeah, and if you sometimes smell someone else, you know, an older person, you know, you know that there is some putrefication going on and their gut is not healthy. Now, the gut is profound for our health, immune system, okay? And you can smell these things, you know, as you probably heard about it, they training dogs now to smell out cancer, yeah? Because cancer comes with certain metabolic steps which then produce certain smells, certain gases, the dog can smell it out. You can feel the figure out if you have cancer or not, yeah? You see, if they train it appropriately. So this smell thing is profound. You know, we test for H. pylori, which is a bacterium in the gut, through breath test, yeah? Because you mm -hmm. breathe out, this bacteria produce certain gases, you breathe out, you're able to analyze in your, in your breath this stuff, you know? So how do you smell if your partner says to you, mm, you know, you should listen to that, <laughs> okay? And do some cleansing, yeah? And make sure you detox and, and cleanse your gut. Gut and immune system, okay? Probiotics, obviously. Acidophilus is a good quality probiotic, uh, colostrum, and so on. Then other herbal factors, things like astragalus, uh, traditional Chinese herbs, Chinese herb, um, mushrooms, reishi, shiitake, other mushrooms, all immune stimulative. Echinacea, yeah, another herb, golden seal, and so on. Elderberry extract, profoundly, thank you. Um, many years ago, I had this Sambukol, you know, bottles, which is, was an Israeli product of elderberry, and whenever I got a cold, the recommended dose was one tablespoon, I drank the whole thing down, okay? Which was about 40 <laughs> tablespoons or so. But, so. And I, I guarantee you, it was one of my tricks, I'll talk about it in a moment, what to do for acute, it was one of my tricks, do not get sick, yeah? So, el elderberry is profound, great stuff. Elderberry extract, some book called or others. So, supplements, any questions? Yes? Did you say um, some of the antibiotics, like I think you said C, it, it in itself will give up its electron and exactly. ultimately become a free radical? Exactly, it does. So, the, that would mean it's bad, but it's good. I, 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 yeah, well, <laughs> turns out, <laughs> Turns out a certain amount of free radicals is not necessarily bad because they stimulate the defense. They stimulate our, it comes back to being exposed to bacteria, for example, if they're not overwhelming, is healthy for immune system. Yeah? Having a certain amount of oxidative stress occasionally, that's where, for example, ozone therapy, which is you know, not really legal in this country, or ultraviolet blood irritation, or hydrogen peroxide, these are all oxidative stressors, yeah? pro-oxidative therapies, not antioxidants. They oxidize, okay? They do harm. They kill bacteria, they kill some of your own tissue. 
if necessary. So how should that go well? Well, you expose yourself to these substances for a short period of time, ozone, yeah? Um, mix your blood with ozone or germ therapy, which irritates your system, but then your immune system comes back and upregulates and produces antioxidants and upregulates the, upregulates the intracellular antioxidants. Yeah? Things like glutathione or catalase and yeah, glutathione peroxidase. Enzymes we cannot stimulate. The real powerhouses <laughs> through this treatment you are stimulated. Like you go under a cold shower in order to get hot. Yeah? Do you understand? So this is compensatory. That's what I'm going to talk about next time more. That's where the Europeans are far ahead of us. Yeah, because they understand this fact that the body needs to react and using this reactivity by sometimes imposing something that actually seems bad is good because it allows us to stimulate, yeah? Like the Chinese hot and cold and all this stuff, yeah? In order to, yes? Does your body acclimate to these supplements? That is, you're taking C every day. Yeah. Does it still have the same effect? And you have to be careful there, and there's not a lot, good point, there's not a lot research Echinacea, we know, very well researched. We know if you continue taking echinacea beyond 10 to 14 days, it will lose its effect. So it stimulates your immune system. After 10 to 14 days, it starts doing so. Yeah? So that's not a good substance for prevention. The antioxidants are vitamin D, vitamin C, selenium, zinc, uh, probiotics, fiber, nutritional factors, eating healthy, all that is good. That will have a preventative effect. But if you go in with herbs, it's not so totally clear. So I think most likely it will come down to the fact that we should pulse these substances. Yeah? And you should take it when you feel vulnerable, but you should not then necessarily stay on it forever. Because stimulating your immune system is better done in a pulsative way. So yeah, omega-3s, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, a multi zinc selenium fiber acidophilus that's all healthy baseline stuff. Any more questions or supplements? Okay. Um, how many vitamins is healthy to take throughout the day? You know, one time a day, three times? Or? Well, normally, as this, it depends what it is. Vitamin D, you only can take once a day because it's fat soluble. Vitamin E, you take once a day. Vitamin D, you could just take once a week. You know, if you want to take 50,000 units of vitamin D, it comes down to 7,000 a day, be my guest. Yeah, once a week is fine. Fat, water-soluble stuff is different. You're going to pee it out. Yeah, the famous expensive urine. After six hours, it's going to be gone. So you should at least take it twice a day, yeah, in order to cover the day. And how many supplements are good? Hard to know. It depends on who you are, you know. And uh, I, I tend to err more on the side of not giving too many supplements. You know, many practitioners, you know, people come, come out of the office with bags and bags of supplements, you know. So you have to kind of find out what's the right thing for you, you know. But this idea of us being primarily deficient and needing supplements to survive is an erroneous idea. You know, we have a super system and we might need support in some areas. No question about it. But, you know, basically we're functioning. And you, in order to figure out why we're not functioning, you know, might be stress, might be nutrition, might be and other things, not only a supplement deficiency, it's only one factor. Oh.